Can we radically transform money and replace fiat currency? It's the question I ask myself on a daily basis. Initially, we all looked to Bitcoin as a new and radically different form of digital cash that would free us from our central bank overlords. But alas, Bitcoin has its own unique challenges that limit its potential as a medium of exchange. However, there is a new and unique DeFi protocol that I think has one of the most compelling economic models. A model that can radically alter the way we think about cryptocurrency. Heck, even money itself. My name is Guy, and in this video, I'm going to take you through this project and explain why it has such amazing potential. I'll also show you how you can directly benefit and make some sweet DeFi gains. So you definitely won't want to miss out on that. Before I barrel into the future, I need to make sure that we are all safely strapped in. I am not a financial advisor, and everything that is presented here is purely for your educational purposes. Please be sure to speak to your financial guy before making any hasty moves in the crypto space. And for anyone new to the Bureau, welcome to my community. I regularly cover news, reviews, and hot market tips. So if that's something that you would like to avail yourself of, you know what to do. Hit up that subscribe button and flick those notifications on. Get plugged into the matrix. Okay, people, enough beating around the blockchain. Let's dive right in. So why is Bitcoin not an effective medium of exchange? Well, for me, there are two main factors that are hampering its use as a monetary asset. The first of these is perhaps the most well-known one. That is its scalability challenges. It's no secret that Bitcoin is not extremely scalable. This just comes down to the nature of its consensus protocol. Of course, there are solutions that are trying to address this, including some that I've talked about in the past. However, the second barrier to adoption is much more fundamental and, unlike scaling challenges, cannot be overcome. That is its fixed supply. Now, I know that many of you will point to Bitcoin's fixed supply as a feature, not a flaw. And that is true. However, it makes Bitcoin function as more of a store of value than as a medium of exchange. The reason that I hold so much Bitcoin in my portfolio is because it cannot be inflated away. I know that the Bitcoin I hold will always be a certain percentage of the network value. However, the problem is that it makes me reluctant to spend this Bitcoin. If I think that Bitcoin is likely to be worth more next year, which I damn well do, I am unlikely to spend it now. Indeed, this mentality is perhaps the same for most Bitcoin users. There is a reason that HODL is the predominant meme and not spend all your Bitcoin. It's also akin to the reason that many people buy gold. Sure, you can buy stuff with gold, but how many people actually do? OK, so I know what you're thinking. Guy, inflation is evil. It's one of the reasons that fiat fails. It devalues people's savings. It's all a plot by the Illuminati to enslave our kids, etc, etc. And all of those concerns are true. However, I would counter that this fiat money is a terrible idea, not because inflation is possible, but because who can cause said inflation? With a fiat money system, the central bank is the issuer of the money. They control the supply and are hence the main forces behind that inflation. If the Fed wants to print a trillion dollars tomorrow, they can easily do it. Hell, they even did just that a few weeks ago with those unprecedented Fed interventions. All of this money printing is no doubt a recipe for potential runaway inflation, something that I covered in a previous video of mine. Now, one would hope that if there ever was inflation, the Fed would curtail that money supply, increase interest rates and increase reserve requirements at commercial banks. Well, it's often a lot harder to pull money out of a system than it is to pump it in. Once the cat is out of the bag, it's pretty hard to get that bugger back into it. And we all know what they say about herding cats. So then we have two monetary alternatives on different ends of the spectrum. Neither of them ideal for being a completely decentralized and trustless medium of exchange. That is, of course, until Ampleforth came along. So what the hell is Ampleforth? Well, 
It's a first-of-its-kind cryptocurrency that is designed with completely elastic supply. What I mean by that is that the total outstanding supply of the AMPL or AMPL, Ampleforth's ERC20 token, is not fixed. It is designed to adjust based on some pretty sound economic principles. The most basic principles of all, supply and demand. Essentially, the protocol is designed to adjust the supply in order to meet the increasing demand. This is done in order to keep the price stable and targeting a specific price. But, and here is the kicker, it is non-dilutive. The issuance of the new supply is done to every wallet pro rata on the Ampleforth network. This means that if you hold a certain percentage of the supply before a supply adjustment, you will hold the same percentage after the adjustment. It's all controlled programmatically through the use of smart contract technology. Now this is quite different from fiat money inflation or even inflation in other cryptocurrency protocols. No one will be left worse off because of an inflation of the money supply. It acts very much like Bitcoin in that respect. Your share is your share. Okay, this all sounds interesting no doubt, but what benefits are there from using such a protocol? Well, there are actually quite a few. So let's take a look at them, shall we? The first thing that Ampleforth is trying to achieve is to denationalize money. They are trying to take money supply out of the hands of national governments and central bankers and place it into a smart contract. This eliminates the issue of trust that many people have with CD central bankers. Another benefit for cryptocurrency holders specifically is stability. Basically, given that supply reacts to demand, we are transferring any price volatility to supply volatility. Through sound economic principles, an increase in the supply should decrease the price and vice versa for a fall in supply. Hence, the Ample token reacts much like a stablecoin, but, and this is an important point, it is not a stablecoin. It's not backed by any sort of fiat currency like a dollar-backed stablecoin. It's not backed by decentralized crypto debt such as DAI. Its stability is targeted through the use of these economic incentives, something that I'll cover in a bit. This stability has benefits for diversification of crypto. You see, many crypto assets are highly correlated with each other. They are affected by most of the same things and will hence move in similar directions. You only need look at this correlation matrix over here to get my point. This is termed systemic risk and it creates a lot of problems, especially when it comes to DeFi assets. Given that volatility in demand for assets like cryptocurrencies is often reflected in volatility of price, it could make things quite unstable. This is particularly the case when it comes to collateralized crypto debt. We only need look at those MakerDAO vault liquidations that happened in March as an example for this. However, with Ample, demand is met by supply. There is no reason for price to act as an equalizing force for the imbalance between the two. Ample is likely to be uncorrelated with the price movements in Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc. This then not only allows developers to build on a more stable ecosystem, but it also means that those who participate with Ample backed debt are less likely to face those costly liquidations. Now, while being trustless and stable is no doubt compelling, the real potential of the Ampleforth protocol extends far beyond this. It is the first system that I know of where you have perfect supply elasticity. It's that highly theoretical magical asset you hear about in Economics 101 that has infinite supply. But not just that. It's supply that can immediately be retracted all in the code. Okay, so I'm sure I've talked up Ampleforth quite a bit, but in order for you to understand it better, we have to take a look at the underlying mechanics. So, how does Ampleforth work? Well, it's basically an Ethereum smart contract that uses the price of the underlying Ample token in order to adjust the outstanding supply of said token. Every 24 hours, the supply change required to stabilize prices is calculated, called the rebasement. Technically, the reference price used is a volume weighted average price over the previous 24 hours. This price is pulled into the smart contract through the use of off chain oracles. Oh, and for the Chainlink fans out there, Ampleforth is another one of those DeFi projects that uses Chainlink oracles. Shout out to the Link Marines. Anyways, if the price is different from the reference price, then the smart contract will implement changes to the outstanding supply 
to try and bring it back into line. These supply adjustments are not made immediately, but are done over a certain period. This is termed supply smoothing. Also, given that this is a completely decentralized and open source protocol, you can immediately verify all of the supply changes yourself. Ampleforth have actually made it quite damn simple to observe through their web dashboard right here. You can pop on over there and see when the next rebasement will be. Total supply, target price, oracles, etc. Now, of course, there is a lot more to the protocol that I've not covered now. If you want to dig a bit deeper into the weeds, then I encourage you to take a look through their white paper. It really was an interesting read. Anyways, what's most important to ascertain about Ampleforth is whether it has performed as intended. Well, yes, it has. You only need look at the price history since its inception. It has achieved a relative amount of stability. This is actually quite impressive for an asset that is not developed specifically as a stablecoin. In terms of diversification, you can also see this correlation matrix over here. Just as designed, the correlation of Ample with all of these other crypto assets is pretty damn low. This reduces that systemic risk that I talked about earlier. Yes, July has seen it break away from its target price of a CPI adjusted US dollar, but this is mainly because of excessive demand. Even though it spiked above $3, those daily debasements have brought it down. The protocol is working as intended. Every time the supply is increased, the price takes a bit of a knock. Eventually, as supply and demand equalize, price should come back towards that target. So this is all well and good, but you're probably no doubt wondering how the hell you can get involved in this DeFi delight. Well, there are two basic ways. The first is, of course, to stock up on some Ample and hodl it. The other is earning additional Ample by providing liquidity on Uniswap. When it comes to the first one, that's pretty straightforward. Ample is listed on some centralized exchanges, including KuCoin and Bitfinex. However, the vast majority of liquidity is on the Uniswap decentralized exchange. This has actually skyrocketed recently, partly as a result of that liquidity incentive that I'll get to in a minute. Anyways, you may be asking, what is the benefit from holding a stable asset? Well, you're holding an asset that could increase in value by virtue of you having more of it. If supply was to adjust in response to the demand, then you would get more ample. This would mean that even if the price stayed level at $1, you would have a larger position. Indeed, for those early investors in ample, this is exactly what's happened. The inflation in the protocol rewarded them with more tokens. If you hodl Ample, you are of the view that the demand will increase and you will hence get more tokens once there is a rebalancing and more are issued. Unlike holding other stablecoins like USDC or DAI, increases in demand could lead to an increase in your total portfolio value. However, there is another way in which you can earn more Ample and that is through the geyser. This is basically the method through which Ampleforth distributes additional Ample to those who provide liquidity to their Uniswap pools. The more liquidity you provide, and for longer, the greater share of the Ample pool you receive. So let's take a look into that. Now, for those of you who are new to the concept of liquidity pools, I encourage you to take a look at my full Uniswap video right over here. However, the gist of it is that you are helping to facilitate the decentralized exchange of Ample to Ethereum over on Uniswap. Not only will you get some of the trading fees for providing this liquidity, but you'll also earn those additional Ample tokens as a reward. Anyways, in order to provide this liquidity, it's pretty damn simple. You'll need to head on over to the desired pool, link provided below. Then you'll need to deposit an equal proportion of the dollar value of both ETH and Ample into the pool. You'll need to unlock your Ample from your wallet and then supply them to the pool. Both actions will need your wallet to approve. Once you've started pooling, it will continue as long as you wish, and you will accrue those trading fees. Not only that, but you'll also earn Uni version 2 liquidity pool tokens. These are tokens that you'll need to stake in order to earn your additional Ample rewards. The staking for these tokens is done over at the Geyser on Ampleforth. I've linked to it below. This is the user interface that will allow you to monitor your Ample rewards as well as observe the broader Geyser stats. If we hop on over to the Deposit tab, you can see exactly how much Ample you'll be able to earn based on the amount of Uni liquidity tokens in your wallet. 
This is the monthly earning potential over here. What is important to note though is that these return percentages assume that you have the max reward multiplier, a three times multiplier. So what does that mean? Well, basically, rewards are multiplied for those that provide liquidity for a longer period of time. This is done in order to encourage users to keep providing much needed liquidity to the ETH ample pools. In order to get those three times multipliers on your rewards, you'll need to stake your liquidity pool tokens for a minimum of two months. Of course, this is only just to accrue those multiplied returns. You're free to supply liquidity for a much shorter period of time and you will still generate reasonable returns. Just not this crazy APY number we see over here. Oh, and don't forget about all those trading fees that you're generating over on the Uniswap pools. Oh, and speaking of those pools, the ETH Ample pool has had some of the most insane growth over the past two weeks. You can see the total amount of liquidity provided right here. And here is the total trading volume. No doubt those early Ample liquidity miners have been handsomely rewarded. Of course, it's important to note that there are risks with this. The first and most important thing to know about liquidity pools is that you are at risk of what is termed impermanent loss. This is basically a potential loss that you could incur by not being in control of the ratio of Ample to ETH. I cover this risk in more depth in my Uniswap video, by the way. I should also point out that this is still a nascent technology and certain smart contract risks do exist. We have seen previous exploits on other DeFi pools by well-heeled and determined hackers, so do consider this as a tail risk. So then, what do I really think of Ampleforth? Well, I must admit that I am really quite impressed by the project. It's one of those unique protocols that has tried to reimagine the entire way we think about traditional economics. Supply inelasticity is a problem that not only plagues mediums of exchange, but also a whole range of other assets. Shocks in demand cannot be quickly met by supply changes, so it impacts on price. When these price swings become excessive, it can have severe implications for markets that rely on them. To me, the Ample Fourth design is a monetary experiment that I don't think we've seen before. A system that's able to radically adjust supply dynamics in a completely trustless and transparent manner. You can actually see this in real time, as the supply adjusts dynamically to the protocol design. As long as the price is above the reference rate, supply is rebased and adjusted. This then feeds through to the price of Ample as market arbitrages try to take advantage of slow price adjustments, just as intended. Oh, and something that I did not touch on earlier, but is worth mentioning, is the caliber of team members on the Ampleforth Foundation. You can see all of this information on their About Us page, but there are plenty of very smart folk working on the protocol. They're also backed by some pretty well-known VCs and blockchain investors. All great to see. Now, of course, this comes to the very important question of whether to hodl some Ample. Well, this all depends on how you think the current DeFi landscape will play out. We all know that the ecosystem is seeing some insane growth, but it does remain risky. The correlation between cryptocurrencies creates a systemic risk which cannot be ignored. Ample could provide much needed diversification in the ecosystem. An asset that's highly uncorrelated with other crypto can stabilize portfolios and debt positions. This could further broaden the appeal of the DeFi space and bring it even more adoption. More adoption equals more demand equals more ample supply equals more ample allocated to the hodler. More adoption means more trading, which means more activity for those who provide ample liquidity. And lest we forget, ample is being distributed to those very liquidity providers as liquidity pool rewards. Yes, there are risks. Risks that I've clearly elucidated. Do the rewards outweigh the risks? Well, I happen to think so. But... I'm not a financial advisor, so you'll have to come to your own conclusions on that one. And that's it, folks, my overview of Ampleforth. Now I need to hand the floor over to you. What are your thoughts on the projects? Do you have any questions for me? I'd love to hear them below. And if you enjoyed this content, then help support the channel by smashing up those likes. And please don't forget to subscribe. My next crypto review is just around the corner. Oh, just one more thing, and this is a big one. Here's the deal. I recently started a weekly email newsletter. 
It's basically an opportunity to share some essential info with my loyal subscribers. I'm talking market views, hidden news, coin reviews, and other juicy tidbits that I could not share in this video. Now, does that tickle your fancy? Well, now is your chance to join. It's so damn simple. Scoot on over to the description. There you'll find a link to my sign-up form. All you need to do is enter your email and hit that submit button. Confirm the link in the email and that's it. You are now locked and loaded. You may just be in time for my next email and that's one you won't want to miss. I'll see you guys in my next video.